number one thing I'll do is I'll do some research about niches that are performing well on YouTube, in bracket, high paying niches. You're not just here to deliver the value you have, right? You need this, the dough. <laughs> Next is learning about thumbnails, titles, description box, SEO, that's a search engine optimizations, keywords to use for your title to rank in the search button. When it comes to title, you might create a wonderful video, but nobody will know if only you use a catchy title that people will click on to watch that wonderful video of yours. So without having a catchy title, nobody will want to click. So make sure that you use a very catchy title that when people click on it, they will watch that video until the end. Then for thumbnails, you mustn't stress yourself too much about creating thumbnails. Yeah, up till now, I don't do too much on my thumbnail. Once I once my picture is there and then it's more right up and I'm good to go. You mustn't do all the, all the designs on this world just to create a thumbnail. You can choose to stay weeks, days on creating, YouTube, on creating thumbnail, but I don't think it's worth it. Yeah, most of you will say that, yes, thumbnail is what people will click on to watch your videos, that and that, that is, that is catchy, something like that. But to me, thumbnail is not the cocoa. Title is the main thing for me, honestly. Like some of my videos, I don't, do, I don't even do anything, thumb of too much on my thumbnail. You will just see my picture and a write-up, and I'm good to go. Then if I'm talking about how to grow on YouTube, anything that has to do with YouTube growth, then I can, have, I can add YouTube logo just little beside my right top or beside my picture and I'm good to go. So most of my clicks, I believe is from my title and not from my thumbnail because like I said, there is nothing special about my thumbnails. You can go through my channel and check for yourself. I'm just doing what I have to do. That's all. But if you think you have the time to create thumbnails, make it more catchy and all of that, it's still not bad. Then about searchable keywords, talking about that, hmm. The reason why she uses Jabu keywords is for you to rank, which I just said earlier, is for you to rank in the search button. Imagine you see how to grow on YouTube. As a beginner, you want to click on it to know what the person is talking about, right? It's a keyword. Just the fact that you've seen how to grow. How to grow. Forget about the rest. Do you understand? So because of how to grow, you want to click. Then um, you can always use any of your title, as in your, your choice of title if you want to, but... Anytime they're talking about a video that you know that so many people have done on YouTube, use keywords that people have also used so they'll be able to rank in the search button. I'm talking from experience. Next is what will be your channel name? When I started, I started with bearing my name, Precious Choma. I kept on bearing Precious Choma, but recently I changed my name into what you're seeing right now, which is Echoes of Experience. I share controversial topics, I do storytelling, and then a little bit of my lifestyle. In all, I was like, let me ask ChatGPT what will resonate with my niche. And I did. They gave me like 20 names. Echoes of Experience was the last name, I'm telling you. I was like, okay, this name is beautiful and it resonates well with my niche. Let's see how it goes. I automatically changed my name to Echoes of Experience. And guess what? Since I changed my name, God has been faithful. My channel started picking up. Like, it seems like it's just now that I started my YouTube channel. I'm telling you because it's been going well since I started bearing that name. So please, let your name resonate with your niche. You don't know if your name will be the reason why you blow up. You don't know, but I'm just saying. Next is, what are you passionate about? And what does your audience want to see from you? It's just like when I started my YouTube channel, I was doing more of lifestyle. I wasn't even doing any. Okay, I, I did a little bit of sit-down vlogs, but I wasn't really serious about it. I really loved doing lifestyle. So at some point, I found out that I wasn't really getting the audience I needed on my lifestyle. I had to divert. I tried to focus more on sit-down vlogs. And yes, it was going well, and I wasn't even doing storytelling or even sharing controversial topics. I was just doing random sit-down vlogs. Anything I see out there, I'll just come and share with you guys here. But I sat down, I thought about what I actually want to do on this channel, and then I came up with storytelling and controversial topics. And then I asked my audience this question, what would they want me to see, or what would they want to see more of me or on my channel? And I threw a poll, by the way, on my community post. I did. I wrote lifestyle, controversial topics, and then a few other niches. So they chose controversial topics and the storytelling. So I had to uh, add both of them and start doing more of it. And yes, 
if you go to my channel you understand that yeah this is what i'm actually doing do you get so it's making sense next is what can you do different that someone has not done before on this youtube streets is it possible <laughs> We have billions of users on YouTube. What is that thing that you do that someone else has not done before here? But there should be. There really should be. Is it your filming style? Is it the way you talk? Is it something? Something, of course. There should be something. <laughs> this is my advice for you. Number one, be authentic. Authenticity pays more than anything. Be real. Don't try to be someone else. Don't fake any accent you don't have. That your mother tongue, there are many people out there that want to hear how you talk. They want to speak like you. They want to act like you. They want to do so many things like you. As you admire somebody, someone else is admiring you. So why wouldn't you want to be yourself? What would you gain if you copy someone else? What would you gain if you be like someone? If you, what would you gain if you act like someone? Like, Of course, people admire you. They want to do all these things like you. That does not mean they will do exactly how you do it. That makes you different. Do you understand? So be you. Look at the way I am right now. I'm always natural. I don't wear makeup because I don't know how to wear it. Of course, I admire people that wear makeup, but I can't. You can only see me wear lip gloss, then some magical lip gloss that will turn from what it is to another color. That's all. I don't wear powder. I don't even. I don't have all these things in my house. Just lip gloss, and that's on period. Number two is this: Don't wait till you have expensive gadgets to start up. Start with what you have. I mean, that phone you have, like I'm filming with my phone right now, start with that phone you have. If you have the money to buy all these expensive gadgets, good for you. If you have the expensive gadgets already, good for you. If you still want to save and buy these gadgets in the future, as you're starting with what you have, it's still not bad. It's a good one. So don't ever procrastinate saying that your phone is not good enough. As long as you have good lighting, just open your window and start filming. You don't have to buy ring light, buy LED light, all those artificial lights. Film with your natural sunlight. I'm because I'm talking to you, my windows are open. I'm talking to you here directly from the sunlight coming in through the window. And that's all. Isn't the quality good enough? What else do you want to see? <laughs> then next is be consistent. Consistency can be you posting every day. It can be you posting two times, three times, four times, five, five, five times in a week. It can be you posting three times or four times in a month. Choose your consistency well. Then next is what? Don't be desperate for monetization because you're going to do things that will hurt your channel in the future. You might think you're doing it right now, but later it will hurt you. So please take it gradually, step by step. Don't do sub for sub. Don't do vibes on vibes. All of them are sub for sub. Don't get your subscribers in the wrong way. Get your subscribers rightfully only by posting your content, be it on short, be it long form, be it live streaming, be it your community post. Please get your subscribers and watch them hours right. I mean, in a very proper way. YouTube will fetch you out if you do anything like this. Please be careful. And finally, finally, <laughs> avoid copyright music. You use epidemic sound to get your music, please. Or you can use some sound in InShot. I use InShot to, to do what? To edit my videos, by the way. So there are so many free sounds I, I, uh, InShot has that I use to, you know, add to my videos if I choose to. That's all I have for you. And I hope you find this advice and the video in general valuable. And please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and share. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.